welcome back to the channel. Um, this is Nigel, Nigel's Modeling Bench, and this is going to be part 8C. Um, as you probably noticed, the cockpit is all 8 something, so uh, it keeps it all together. Um, you've seen my review. Uh, HGW were good enough to send me a set of their brand new um, seat belts for this kit. I know it's all glossy. I'm sorry, but uh, I can't help the glossy packaging. Um, and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to use this segment to, to fit these. And it's going to be spaced out over a little while because there's a lot of bits and pieces I've got to do in between. Let it dry and then come back to you. So, first of all, the seat. Now, if you remember back in the beginning, I went round and put Mr. Servicer in all the... Um, the ejection pin marks and it would appear that over time it shrunk back um, they the side ones just sort of reappeared you could see them you could just see the ones in the base there I'm not sure if you can pick that out of the camera but I'm not going to sand them out because I'm going to put the, the dinghy in um, and also if you are going to use these seat belts um, the, the kit seat belts have like a 1.3 millimeter diameter pin that goes into the side of the seat there so what I've done I've glued in I've super glued some 1.3 rod drilled it out 0.55 then I've put some 0.5 brass rod in there and I don't know if you can get it on the camera if you can see basically that's what I've done and then you can just see it on the inside because I think that's probably what those holes would have been for would be to get to the interior fixings to remove the harnesses um, so you can just see something in there which makes it a little bit more accurate again um, I've also removed the little lug on the back which is designed to take the kit seat belt and I've put a, 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 piece, a piece of 0.5 brass in there as well. So when it comes to assembly time, it'll be a case of having the main harness over this bar here, hanging in there, just glue it to the back of the seat, put the seat in and then pull the harness up and over. So it's going to be quite fiddly, but um, we'll get there. <clears throat> so before you do this, I mean, I've got that there is sticking out. Let's just start sticking out two millimeters um, I don't want it too short because I want to make it a bit easy to, to use and I'm just checking the fit of my seat to make sure that it doesn't foul on anything and it doesn't so if you go two millimeters you'll be fine um, and I've actually drilled it in that position the lower part of where that U section shape was uh, so basically now the seat needs to be painted again um, so I'm gonna have to go away and do that the other thing I would advise before you paint your seat and frame and everything make sure it sits in these slots in the floor and fits in these holes at the back with ease because if you have to struggle with it you will actually bend the legs and then if then you find you have to move the cockpit floor up to make it fit the fuselage and stuff you'll bend the legs even more so all I've done is just holding the leg come along with a sanding stick and just just remove some plastic from each side and you're better off really having it too short than too long um, because the last thing you want is those legs actually bowing out so there we go and on both of my kits I found the legs were too long so um, see where you go with that so uh, yeah we've got the seat in there now I'm gonna go and give that another coat of paint and a gloss coat and then we'll uh, then I'll come back to you and we'll look at doing these seat belts right so let's have a look at these seat belts the seat is painted and I've given it a clear coat just to make it a bit more hard wearing um, so there we go that's that I've done a little bit of work on the um, dinghy base as well that's been put to one side so let's have a look at these belts so for this initial part of the video I will cover the harness straps so what do we need we need our Pringles lid with a drop of super glue nice cutting mat for the PE our PE our seat belts and our instructions if you saw my review I talked about this here being um, not included in the kit it looks like HGW are using this as a generic um, assembly guide for all their US aircraft so and it looks like all the seat belts are probably the same as well the beauty of this one is you get a separate the uh, the, the number five is a separate part I don't, I don't know why um, probably makes it easier to paint the back so what we're going to do first of all is remove our main harness from this um, I guess you'd call it a fret and all we're going to do is cut the end like so and then on the other end like so and like so so there we go that's that off of there and then the next thing we do is we pick it up and we screw it up into a little ball just like this now if you're doing an older set have a look at your, your um, <clears throat> set obviously if it's a really old one you've got to cut them out 
um, and then like the more recent ones if you look on the back if it's got a little red lines on it you've got a backing paper you need to peel off this one doesn't have that obviously because it's covered on the back so there's no backing paper to peel away so I'm just going to roll this up into a little ball like so and it's just basically putting some creases into it and it's going to make it sort of instead of just like just laying straight it will make it um, want to conform more so now I can straighten that out okay just put that down on the bench just lay it out like that and you can see that screwing it up it just puts a few creases in it and in fact I'm going to screw it up again what I'm trying to do is just give it a bit of texture so it's it's not just a flat piece of fabric and this is the beauty of these belts over any other is this this the way you can do this okay so there we go so that's that done now we need to make sure we get the right side because one side's got some stitching on it and the other side hasn't so we want to make sure we've got the right side facing forward and the stitching isn't very apparent until you start to put stains and stuff on it then it'll come out I think this is the front here yeah we've got a little nick in the laser cut in there so I know that's got to be on the right so I know I'm okay right so I'm going to do this top loop first here number three so I'm going to get number three off the PE fret a nice sharp knife blade and I'm just going to go in remember I've already pre-drilled these I'm just going to go in like this there we go that's that one off so now I can take a pair of locking tweezers hold this like so and I'm just going to take a little sanding stick and just clean off the nibs where it was on the fret and now I can keep it in those locking pliers and I can thread it through so what I'm going to do is this little piece on the end here this is going to be folded over Grab some tweezers. It's going to be folded over. I'm going to go into the into the buckle. So I can put the buckle like that. It doesn't really matter which way it goes. This one's never going to be seen anyway. Take that out the tweezers. Sorry, I've done that wrong. It goes that way. I would normally be working with a magnifier or an optivisor doing stuff like this. So if I'm taking my time, I'm sorry. There we go. We're through. And what I'm going to do is just have that over I'm on the back of there so I'll take my little glue applicator a drop of super glue on the back of there just a tiny drop and then fold that over and that's that one done okay so there's our first one now you can see already how realistic this is starting to look with those creases and everything in it you can see that it's just you know very very realistic 
I haven't got that very straight there so I'm going to see if I can peel it away no I can't I'm not going to worry about it because it's not going to be seen anyway but on the others I'll have to be more careful in fact I'm going to have to find a way of doing this and looking through my magnifier so right so now on the instructions we've got these buckles here that are going to go over this main harness so the first thing to do is put these little tassel parts in here and these are on the um, on the fret here so I'm just going to cut two of these off like so there we go there's those two and then I'm going to take off two numbers so I'll take one off first of all number six It's got that double-sided tape on the back to help hold it to its uh, card. So that's number six off. Again, I'm going to put it in my locking tweezers. Now I'm able to. I'm doing this now. Hopefully, you can see what I'm doing. I'm looking through a magnifier, and hopefully, you can see what I'm doing as well. Looks like you can. So cool. Now then. This photo etch is slightly out of register, but obviously that's for both sides. I don't think that's going to cause us too much of an issue. So I'm just going to take this one in my tweezers, making sure I have the front side facing out. I'm just going to pass that through there. Which is easier said than done. There we go. Okay, so that's done like that. Now I can take an absolutely tiny, tiny drop of super glue just to hold that in place. stop it keep falling out looks like the drop of super glue was too tiny There we go, now we've got one in there, cotton bud, just soak up the excess and now that's gone in like so. And now what I can do is just come along with my little tiny Tamiya cutters and just remove most of that from the back. Not all of it, just most of it. There we go. And that gives it less of a bulge in the back then, so it'll look more natural. And I don't know if you can see on there now, I certainly can with the magnifier, but there's stitching detail in there. Which again, as I say, it's, once it's got a wash on it, you'll be amazed how it pops. Okay, so that's that done. Now we need to thread this onto our main harness. So again, making sure we've got the front facing forward. It's going to go into the back. Oops, wrong hole. Like so. You see now I've done that wrong straight away. I haven't. Just go into the back. And then over the front, making sure you don't put a twist in it. Through there.
and then just pull that through like so. I can, I know, I can see straight away that's too far up the harness. So what I'm going to do is pull some of this back out. You need to be gentle with your tweezers, don't go wrenching on it and stuff because you might mark the textile material and you, again your wash will pick it up. That's about right. There we go, that's down like that now. So I can sit there, I think that's about right, maybe a little bit higher. Remember these things would have been sort of across the, the breastbone if you like, if that's what you call it. Okay, I've done that one on both sides now, so uh, there we go, you can see the harness is starting to come together and look like a, a proper harness. So now we're looking now, I'm going to add these two pieces in here, the number twos, and they're on here, so we've got to cut these away carefully so as not to remove any of the belt, but as not to leave any of the little nib behind. So we'll cut those away like that carefully. And do the same on that one. So that's those two separated. Now that one I've left a tiny bit of nib by the look of it. So I'm just going to cut that off. Again making sure we keep the front facing forward. I am now going to thread this through here. He says. Let's hold it a bit closer to the end. There we go. So we can pull that through there. And then I'm going to hold the back of that. And I'm going to push this over and thread it into the bottom. Like so. Unfortunately I've picked up the wrong tweezers, these are bent on the ends and the actual ends don't grip. I can just pull that through. Grab a different pair of tweezers. Pull that through there. Like so. Without grabbing the bottom belt, just grab the top belt. There we go, and then you just pull it about and get it evened up so it's equal about. Just take a bit from the bottom. And if you're finding this boring guys, fast forward. But I do know for a fact oops, that there are some people out there who want to see this in detail and how I do it. I've done a few. Uh, this is my first 24 scale. I've done some 30 seconds. I think I did a 48 on something once. Boy that's fiddly on 48th. Right. There we go. So put a bit more of that. There we 
we go, that's about equal about now. So I can take a tiny drop of super glue. In the back of there and then making sure it stays just put that down like that so that's that one done and then doing the same on this side on the bottom should I say I'll drop a super glue on there Bring them together. And there we go, that's your little stiffener in there like that. Okay, so I'll go on and do the other side and then I'll be back. Right, so there's both of them done now. And I think you'll agree, they look quite stunning. Really, really nice. So, um, okay, so what's next? Wait till you see this with a wash on it, it's, um, it'll blow your mind. Right then, we've got to put these buckles on the bottom here, number 7 and number 8. But I'm looking at them on the PE front, it looks like they're wrong. If you look at the picture, say look at number 7, you've got the wider slot there and then it folds over at 90 degrees for this to come down. But actually when you look at number 7, you've got that way round, say. Yeah, number 7 is the right hand one now. You would think the fold line would be across here, so you fold that round. But when you look at it, the fold line is actually there, so you fold it up. So I'm not quite sure what to do here. So I'm going to take it off the fret and have a look, and then I'll come back and tell you what I've decided to do. Okay, so what I've decided to do is ignore... Let me try and hold this in some tweezers for you. You can see that line on there where you're supposed to... Just make sure you can see the camera. You can see that line where you're supposed to fold it. Well, that's going to make it actually point out forwards, which I don't think is correct. Um, it's going to sort of come out and be sat like that rather than like that. So what I'm doing, I've got my Tamiya bending pliers. And what I'm going to do is just hold it where I think it should go and bend it down. So I'm ignoring the bend line. Basically then what I've done is made a pair of buckles like that okay so rather than using the fold line on the part i've actually decided to do it my way just like the bronco so this one's part number seven so i'm going to put this one in and this is going to go down the left hand side so what i'm going to do i'm going to hold this in my snap lock tweezers then basically this is going to go that's the front so it's going to go over there like that and then it's going to fold over now I want to make sure I've got it pulled down tight So that we don't see any of that narrow section of belt. And yes guys I know what you're thinking, my nails are disgusting, I'm sorry but they're the only ones I've got. Whoa. and do this without pulling that buckle over. Oh, come on. Oh, 
Right. Tiny drop of super glue on the back of there. And then push that down, making sure it stays in the centre of the belt, not off to one side like that. And there we go. So that's that side done. I'll do the other side and then I'll be back. Okay, so there's our main harness finished. And as you can see, it looks very, very realistic. If I could get it to stay flat in my hands. It looks very realistic. And all the buckles are great and all silver and everything already. So there we go. That's the main harness done. So let's have a look at one of these um, lap straps. And we'll do this one first because this is the simpler of the two. So we need number three and P number two first, I think. So we'll get P number two, which is here. Pass that one off. Again, locking pliers. Hold it in them and just remove the little nibs from the fret. So I'm going to now and then number three on here is one of these straps here. So I'm just going to cut that. Yeah, this doesn't have the little narrow bit on the end, this is just a straight. Just turn around so I can see what I'm cutting. And we'll get one of these number fours off as well ready. With these you'll be more careful so as you don't leave any of that little bit on there because you want it to look good. There we go. And I managed to cut one into that at an angle, didn't I? So I'm just going to trim that just to get it looking a bit better. There we go. So we take one of these, making sure it's the right way up. And our number two, making sure that's the right way up, and I'm going to put it in my locking tweezers and just slide that through there, like so. And if you look on here, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, there's some stitching, and the stitching is what's going to determine where you push this up to. It's like webbing. So what I'll do, I think I'll see if I can fold this. pull the buckle down to meet it. Whoops, not right off though. There we go. So we hold that there. Whoops. I've got these I've got like six pairs of tweezers and I have to pick the wrong ones, don't I? There we go, you see you got the webbing on the on the end now. So I'm going to turn that over. 
and try and hold that in place. Get some glue in and then my glue looper has got a huge ball of glue on the end which is dry so I need to clean that off in a second. Just pull that up to make sure it's all nice and central. And there we go. So that's stuck down there now. That's on there which is cool. Now we need to get our buckle number nine. What I'll do first, I'll clean my glue looper off and I'll show you how I do that. A cigarette lighter. The super glue just burns away. Uh, so we need photo etch part number nine, which is one of these down here. Let's get these out of the way so I don't cut them. Tweezers. Hold on to that. Now, we need another number six to go through here. So we'll cut this off like so. And again, making sure it's the right way around, flick it off the bench like that. That's the, that's the front there. You can see the, the stitching pattern on the front very, very faintly. that through there, give it a tug, and then with the clean glue looper I should be able to get a tiny drop of glue in there, just enough to hold it. There we go, that's in there. And then this one is going to thread over, making sure we get the front upwards. So that's going to thread up there. And then down the other side. So I just get it somewhere in the middle. Let's move it a little bit that way. Here we go. So that's like that. Now I'm going to get my of these and thread this through the same as we did before so this is going to go under here Easier said than done. But there we go, it's going now. So I'm going to pull that through. To about there. Hold that side. I'm going to thread that one through there.
Wow, this is difficult. But the beauty of it is, however hard this is, the end result is always worth it. If you're building a 30 second scale Luftwaffe kit, I can highly recommend the HDW Luftwaffe belts, they look amazing. I know what I didn't do with this, I didn't screw this one up. I forgot. That's right, we can do it afterwards. There we go. So I'm going to push a bit more through that way. And there we can see that we've got all that in like that. So just take a bit of glue on the back of there. Make sure it's nice and square. Same on the bottom. There we go, that's that down. So as you can see guys, it's not too difficult. Then we've got to fit on the buckle at the end, which is number four. If you remember, I pre-drilled these, 0.55. You know, I would recommend as well, something I haven't done is take the double-sided tape off the back of your photo wedge because it's a pain when you're trying to slide it around on your cutting mat. It's a pain, it sticks down. So, um, another little quick tip for you there. So this can go in here now. Whoops, I dropped it again. And there we go, guys. There it is, all done. Okay, so that's that belt done. Let's have a look at this other one then. This other one's a lot more involved. Now, I've, I've screwed this one up. I screwed this one up after it's all glued together. So you still get the sort of folded up bent effect and everything on it but you'll see that on the seat in a minute um so a photo etch here we want one off number four there's that one there here we go so that's the number four so we can put that one on the same as we did before. Let's grab our locking pliers. And for you listeners in America, there's your good old English ice cream van. And that one is a particular pain because he comes round three times a day and he puts his alarm on about every hundred yards. So uh, yeah, great, thanks for that. So put that through there, just like before. I'm going to glue that together. So I'm going to get some glue in here. Just like that and then that's that glued together. Getting the hang of this now. And this is the one that goes down the side of the seat. So you can see I'm a little bit out of line on there, but hey, it's down the side of the seat and you're never gonna see it. So we need another number nine and another number six. 
So we'll take another number six off of the fret, like so. And then we're going to get a number nine off the PE fret. There we go. I'm going to put this one through, making sure I get the front side. Just put that through like so. Go. Tiny drop of glue on the back again if I can find my glue looper. There we go, that's that glued in. Then I can thread. This one through here just like we did before. And then over we go. Thread that one through that side. And I'm sorry about the sound guys, I'm this is currently now with no microphone at all just the microphone in the camera because I am getting comments in the same video saying the sound is great other people saying the sound is wrong there's a noise in the background there's a buzzing there's a hissing I can only do what I can with what I've got and I keep chopping and changing and I get people saying that sounds great and other people say it sounds awful so you can't please all the people all the time so I'm just going to please myself If I use that mic I specifically bought from Amazon for it, that's when I start to get the crackling and stuff, which I don't get with the iPhone mic. But with the iPhone mic, people say there's a, a buzzing or whatever in the background, so there is a humming in the background, that's my fan, it's because it's quite hot, humid. So, there we go. Right, so that's gone in there like that. Now we're going to thread this one through. So I'm going to grab this in my locking tweezers. Oops. In fact, I'll do this off camera because you've seen me do this enough. Right, so now I've got to make up this little uh, buckle arrangement here. So I've got part five off the fret here. And then I've got the little piece that goes on top. Sorry, five is this little piece here. Part number one is, is over here. So I've got that there and those tweezers ready to go on. So we'll do a bit of folding work on this one. So I'm going to fold these sides in first. So they're just going to go over on themselves like a thaw. Push them down. And then I'm going to use my tweezers actually straighten them out. There we 
go, so they're all nice and straight now. And then this little piece here is going to glue on in the middle. And it goes... I need to straighten this out because I've managed to bend it. Okay, and that little part on the end, this bends up. Hold that there and then give that a nudge up. And then that little piece is going to go on here like that. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we'll see how we get on with this then. So what I'm going to do a drop of super glue in the middle of there and I'm going to put this in there and see if it stays bit of time to play with it because the super glue is old as I've said before if your super glue is getting off getting a bit old you can actually um, work with it a bit longer okay so that's gone down like that so I'm going to put this in these locking tweezers here and I'm going to get a drop of thin super glue The reason I use thin is it will capillary into every little gap that's there and it will practically disappear. There we go. Cotton bud. Just take away the excess. And there we have it. So once that's had a wash it'll look, uh, it'll look fine. There you go, there's that buckle there. You can imagine doing that in, uh, where is it, here we are, where are we, here we are, imagine doing that in 48 scale. Okay, so now we've got that, we can take our strap and put it on through. hold it in place like that. Yeah, I want a bit more belt through than that. And I want it straight. There we go, that's straight. So, Some glue on there, let that run in. There we are. That's that buckle done, and unfortunately, the glue has gone between the belt and the buckle. So, I don't know if I can twist it and make it break away. before he gets a chance to cure. No, we'll have to deal with that later. So there we go. And now last but not least, we've got this little piece here, number five, which we've got to cut off. Cut off nice and square.
and then this glues onto the back of that buckle. So what I'll do is I will put a what I'll do is put this in place. Right, so I've brought you nice and close for this so you can uh, see a bit better what's going on. Basically, if you remember, I put these little brass pins in the side of the seat. So now we can hook this onto there. Onto that brass pin. If it'll go through the hole. Yep, there we go. And then this one will also hook onto this side if it'll go over now that it's painted. Yep, there we go. It's gone over. That one goes down in there, that one goes down in there. Now, I'm not going to fit them now because I want to do some more work on the seat and stuff, but just to give you the idea of how they look, what I'm going to do is try and hold them down in like so. Okay, so you can see that they look really good, and then the harness will come. It's got too much spring in it one way, the harness. Need to stretch that one out a bit there. There we go. So the harness will come along and sit in there something like that. Okay. And then these will come along and go over the top like so. And then what you do is just put a dab of glue on them just to hold them in place and then and you can see there that once they're actually held down they are very very realistic looking belts okay so now obviously because the seat's not ready i can't actually fit all this in yet And I need to finish the cockpit so that what I can do is actually let me grab the cockpit. Okay, so what I can do the sharp rider much you'll see I've done some detail painting on the cockpit. I've got the uh, the rubber hoses and the bands on there now, which I remember the bottom of the masking tape. Done the um, gator around the base of the uh, around the base of the control column there, and also the headrest. I wasn't sure whether to do it canvas or black leather. Um, I've done it with a a satin gravel paint and a rubber finger over it and it gives it a leathery look so this belt is basically going to have to go down behind this rail so what we're going to do is put that out straight and that's going to go down in behind there like so and then we'll grab it from behind and pull this down through like that okay and then that's going to come over this way the whole thing's going to come over kind of central and then these belts will run across to either side of that headrest like that and then we'll hook that onto the back of the seat okay so I'll pull it right down through hook that onto the back of the seat when I'm ready to glue the seat in and then I'll fit the seat like so and you can see that now you've got the harness sitting over that one's come off that bolt but let's just concentrate on the main the uh, shoulder straps you can see you've got that main harness there will sit down over that rail like so and there you go guys you can see i've just got them placed in there but it gives you an idea of how good they're going to look okay so thanks for watching and i will see you for more cockpit stuff very very soon we've got part 13 will be next up for the rest of the build, but I'm going to keep calling these cockpits part A, B, C, D, E, 
Next we'll do some work on the air scale stuff and I want to get this in together and get some weathering done and then I can get some stain on these belts and um, we'll go from there. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you all real soon. Get yourself a set of these belts, they are awesome.